Today's graduation day for these little grains of rye at Dark Cloud Malt House in Howard County. They've spent three and a half days germinating. Now they're about to start drying in the kiln, one step closer to becoming malt, a key ingredient in beer. About five brewers will be using this, so I know one brewer has got a rye IPA planned. I think there's almost like a lager, a very mild rye beer, and then we have a few others. But first, maltsters Jesse Case and Danny Buswell need to run a few tests to make sure the rye is at the right moisture level and modification, or the process of converting starch into sugar. So when we're taking that grain and we're peeling it apart and we're rubbing it between our fingers, that's a good way for us to see how well modified the grain is. And that's really the point of a maltster, is to modify grain for your brewer. But these aren't the only tests this rye has been through. In fact, it's part of a much larger experiment. We grow most of the grain on site, but we have met local farmers who are also interested in trying to produce local malted barley or rye. Danny and I had an idea that we would like to maybe work with the University of Maryland and try to develop a rye that was targeted for brewers but also distillers. That's why four months earlier, when the rye was still growing, it underwent a checkup from Bob Craddeville. He's the extension agronomist for the University of Maryland. That means he studies crop production, like these four acres of rye. And this is what we call an on-farm project, where we've actually gone to a farmer's field and placed research plots into that field. In Maryland in 2016, almost 80,000 acres of rye were planted as a winter cover crop to help improve soil health. But Bob wants to cultivate rye with traits suitable for malting or distilling into whiskey. Ideally for the farmer is one that's going to yield well. They want one that will germinate so it will provide good malt. You want to make sure you don't have any diseases that impact the production of the crop. In other words, a crop that farmers can harvest and sell at a premium. As Maryland's craft brewing and distilling scenes grow, more maltsters, brewers, and distillers are looking to use local grain. That's why Natalie Ziegler, who owns this field at Carroll Mill Farm in Ellicott City, wanted to get in on the ground floor. We've been looking for a long time for some realistic, higher value crop. And this one with Maryland's burgeoning distillery and brewery industry seemed possible. It seemed like a really good way to diversify and do something that would bring in a little more money. About six weeks later, it's harvest time and Bob's already getting some results. I can see that we're getting better yields than we typically would in the normal rye that's grown for cover crop production. That's a good sign for farmers. They'll also get helpful tips from the trial's other findings, like the effect of a nitrogen fertilizer and a fungicide that guards against a toxin-producing fungus. After all, yields don't mean anything if the crop can't be sold. That is of critical concern for any of the grains that are used for food products. As the test plot combine rolls down the field with some helpful directions from Bob, it measures the yield and moisture content of each test plot. A monitor inside the cab shows the results, and up top. The grain runs into the collection bin, and he has just a little cup that he holds under that stream of grain, and he's getting a representative sample. They'll send these samples to a lab in Vermont to be analyzed. That'll give us an idea of how good the quality is, and we'll compare the quality with the yield numbers that we have. Hopefully, this will give farmers the best recipe for growing these new kinds of rye. But in the meantime, it's just exciting to be on the threshold of something new. It's a new industry in Maryland, and I feel like it could be something that could really help agriculture. So it seems like a fun, exciting thing to be a part of. 